Good morning. <laughs> That'll get us started off well. Welcome to Titusville First United Methodist Church, where we hope you will feel God's love in a new and refreshing way. We are glad that you are here to worship with us this morning. Welcome if you are worshiping with us uh, through the internet or through uh, television. Have a few announcements to make this morning. First of all, it is graduation recognition Sunday, so if you are a graduate and you are here with us this morning, which I see there are a couple, um, you are going to be asked to come down right after the children's message, just so we don't spring that on you last moment. And uh, probably even give you an opportunity to share uh, what will be coming up here in the near future for you. Also, today, right after this service, rifling through my paperwork here, there is a fundraiser for the Nairobi, Kenya, Africa mission trip. And this will be from uh, noon to 2 o'clock. And anybody and everybody is in, in, invited. And this will support the completion of the orphanage and the mission trip. Um, Reverend Alberta Smith and the team, and possibly Kim Otney too, and I think that has been confirmed. She is going to go. Also, ask you to fill out this attendance uh, form found in your bulletin. That can be passed forward as we sing the first hymn. And it must be summertime already because we're talking about VBS. Vacation Bible School is just about two months away, July 24th through the 28th. And this year's theme is Deep Sea Discovery. And uh, you'll see a flyer in your bulletin on that as well. I don't see any more announcements, uh, so if you would join with me, and I'm going to ask you to stand to join in our call to worship found in your bulletin and on the screen and also in Psalm chapter 8. If we would all stand together, please. Thank you. What are human beings that you are mindful of them and mortals that you care for them? You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. Please remain standing and join in hymn number 64.
Please join with me in this morning's opening prayer. Everlasting God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and ever live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Grant that we may always hold firmly and joyfully to this faith, and living in praise of your divine majesty, may finally be one in you. You are three persons in one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's take a moment to greet each other in the name of Jesus Christ.
We invite the children to come forward at this time for this morning's children's moment. Hey. Good morning. How are we today? Pretty good? Yeah. Are you glad it's not snowing today? Yeah, I, th I almost thought I was going to have to bring my snowmobile to church last Sunday. But, nevertheless, it's springtime, going on summer. VBS is coming up. I'm pretty excited about that. You guys are going to come to VBS? Yeah? You know what VBS stands for? Uh-huh. I thought so. Vacation Bible School. Yeah. Vacation Bible... Part of that means you're on vacation from school, which was always good news to me. What's that? Well, eventually you will. Eventually. Yep. But that's not what I want to talk about this morning. I want to talk about two words, one of the words being knowledge and one of the words being wisdom. And <laughs> I want to start it off by asking you, if I were to wrap up a Christmas present or a birthday present, those are pretty good times of the year, and give it to you, what would you do with it? What's one of the first things you would do with it? Maria? I would open it. You would open it. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly what I was hoping you would say. Because it's no good to you if you don't open it, right? You just set it in the corner and look at it and say, yeah, that's my birthday present, but really doesn't do you any good. Okay. Now, I'm going to switch gears a little bit and use that same thought, that same idea, with the word knowledge, knowing something. If you, it, you know, it's been said the difference between knowledge and wisdom is knowledge is knowing what to say and wisdom is knowing when to say it. But with knowledge, if we know something, it doesn't do us any good if we don't do something about it, right? If your house was on fire and you said, yeah, my house is on fire, but you didn't get out, it's not going to do you any good. Yeah, you, yeah you, need, you, need to, you need to act on it. And so, knowing what to do isn't just good enough. We, ought to, we need to have the wisdom, or the smarts, or the obedience to act on it. If God asks us to do something, we need to do it. Does that make sense to you? It's no, just like the present, it's no good to us if we don't open, open it up and use it. So we need to use the knowledge that God has given us. And we're going to pray and ask God to give us the strength and ask God to give us wisdom. And then we're going to have a children's collection. All right, let's bow our heads together and we're going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you've revealed yourself to us through your word, that you came and walked with us in the flesh as, as a person named Jesus. And we thank you that you give us your spirit. And God, I ask that you would give us wisdom to know uh, what to do and the strength to do it so we can be obedient children. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, right over here on this front pew are the baskets. Yep. need somebody to go upstairs too, up in the balcony. Has anybody been up there before? You remember how to get up there? Yep. Go ahead and head upstairs with those baskets too. Yep. There you go. 
go. Now she will help you. children are invited to stay with us this morning during our worship service. Our junior church leader today is in the hospital. Uh, Penny is in the hospital. She was in the hospital. They didn't keep her. It's catch and release then. Yes. Okay. So she's at her parents and uh, she was having some hip trouble. Um, but be praying for Penny. Um, she can't be here today and she's not feeling well uh, with hip pain. So thank you, Beth. We also have someone else missing today. Uh, Patty fell during the week and injured her right arm, so she's not here to play the organ for us. And uh, Peg has volunteered to, to assist with the worship service. So we uh, want to keep Patty in our prayers. Okay, thank you. And as the children are bringing the offering uh, collection forward, um, I had one of them ask me last week when I said the uh, collection baskets are on the pew, they said, well, what's a pew? And I, I, I told them it was a seat. And just because of that, uh, we picked out some uh, graduation presents for this morning. We're going to segue into the graduates coming forward at this time. And one of the magnets says, if your life stinks, we have a pew for you. So... <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Very humble of you, Jared. He said he doesn't expect another round of gifts. He was here in the early service. You got his gift already. And have you opened it? I did. Good. Good. Um, very, very proud of these uh, young adults, adults now. And there are a few that can't be with us here this morning. And uh, their names are in the bulletin, and there's, um, I'm going to introduce uh, these folks, but uh, Deanne um, was perched now at Salvo, and it's uh, not Deanne anymore, it's Dr. Deanne. She has received a doctor in, in uh, f of pharmacy, so uh, congratulations to her. Then we have David Zayner, and is the bulletin correct, Duquesne University? Okay, and then Lindsay Downing from Edinburgh. And Jared Drake from uh, Titusville. <laughs> and Christina Sliney from Maplewood, I think. Um, but I'm going to give you guys an opportunity just to uh, share a few moments uh, what the next few months might look like for you. <laughs> All right. So the next few months are kind of unsure, just looking for a job. But at the moment, I'm working on websites for like the Pittsburgh Police Department. and. Um, the Co Cochrane real estate around here, and basically that's it. But <laughs> and what's what's your degree in, David? Uh, computer science. Okay. Yeah. Well, I got a degree in early childhood and special education from Edinburgh University, and in the next month and a half, I'll be moving to Florida. Wow. I'm teaching second graders. Um, it's called Citrus Springs Elementary School. It's about an hour north of Tampa, so I'll be on the Gulf Coast for the next hopefully a couple years. Uh, my plan is to go to either Slippery Rock or Geneva College for music education. And you? My plan is to retire again. <laughs> <laughs> Would uh, like to pray over you 
folks. Um, and invite anybody from the congregation to come forward at this time as we lay hands on these um, young people and, and pray over them. If you three would just kind of put your hand on the person beside you. There we go. <laughs> Let us bow for prayer. Our Father in heaven, we recognize that graduation is a big step that requires a lot of, lot of work and a lot of effort to get to that top of the step where you get to graduate. But we also recognize that when you graduate, you step from the top step to the bottom of a new one. And so, as these young people uh, make that transition in their lives, we ask that you will be with them, guide and direct them in the decisions they make, in the work that they do, in the way that they uh, continue their lives, never stop learning and, and moving forward, but continue to, to um, work to, to gain the knowledge and the wisdom that we are talking about this morning. We just thank you for the efforts that they have put in, the accomplishments that they have made, and ask that you will be with them as they move forward in their lives into new and wonderful things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And before you go, I have a gift that I'd like to give you, and it yeah, entails more than just the magnets that I talked about earlier. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you want another magnet? <laughs> no, I'm all right. Congratulations. And um, if you have a child, if you're here and your child wasn't able to make it today, um, I have gifts for uh, any of the graduates that, that weren't able to make it this morning. I'll be sure to get one to you after the service. Thank you. And I think... Pastor Lee, this is where you take over. It's time to receive your gifts and your offerings from the, as the ushers come forward.
Will you stand? Father in heaven, we are thankful to you for the many gifts and blessings that you provide for us. We now ask your blessing on this portion that we return to you. Bless that it might be used to do your work and your will in our church, our community, and in the world around. In Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated. As we go to our prayer time this morning, we've mentioned a few uh, people that uh, we want to keep, keep in our prayers. Uh, Margie's having surgery this week, and um, Kathy, <laughs> sometimes I can't say Kathy. Kathy is having surgery on Wednesday. Uh, we know about uh, um, some of the other things that have happened. We want to remember uh, Peg, um, not Peg, Peg's doing fine. We want to remember Patty um, as uh, she's sprained her arm and uh, needs some prayers for recovery. So let's bow our heads and unite our hearts in our time of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we praise you as we come together, as we lift up our songs and our praises to you. We open up our hearts and our, and our minds to your word and, and uh, things that, that come to, to us when we gather in fellowship with each other, when we share the love of Jesus Christ in, in this time of worship. And we're so thankful and we praise you for that. We also know, Father, that whenever we gather together, you have told us to, to offer prayers for those needs that, that we know are around us, people who uh, might be suffering because of loss, because of injuries and sickness. So we lift those up to you, Father, knowing that you are aware of every one of them and you have already uh, been a part uh, of those things. We know, Father, that uh, things like th things of this nature uh, are not just in, don't do not just involve the the individual person, but it involves caretakers and those around them. It involves many, uh, particularly in a time of loss. So we we lift those things up to you, Father. We thank you and praise you for the beauty of the day. Oh, we know there's been some rain, but after the rain, there's always the sunshine. And with the sunshine comes the flowers and the grass and, and all those wonderful things in nature that you provide for us. And the things that remind us of the new life that comes to us through Jesus Christ. We thank you and praise you for those things. We thank you and praise you for the wisdom that you extend to us through the power of the Holy Spirit and through the love of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
I want to read first this morning from John chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. This is Jesus talking. But when he, the spirit of the truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he te will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. And we need to be reminded that this Holy Spirit is the Spirit that gives wisdom to us. I want to continue this morning uh, reading from Job chapter 38. Because there's a very important lesson here in Job. Uh, it says here, then the Lord answered Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that darkens my counsel with, with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. God is saying to Job, I will question you. And I believe he says that to you and to me from time to time. And then God goes on. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched the measuring line across it? On what were the footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Who shot up the, shut up the sea behind doors? And who burst it forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed its limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, this far you may come and no farther, here is where your proud waves will halt, these are the things that God is saying to, to Job in this passage of Scripture. And, and chapter 38 continues to tell Job all the things that God knew in his wisdom, wisdom that Job did not have. We think about those words and we recognize that in in God's word comes that, that wisdom that he has for his people. God speaks. He says, I will question you and you shall answer me. And then he lays it on a line. He lays it on the line to Job and tells Job all the things that he did, all the things that he is aware of, and things that Job knew nothing about. We move from chapter 38 of Job into chapter 8 of Proverbs. And once again, we have a word about God's wisdom. The wisdom of God. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work. And here in Proverbs, they are, the writer is talking about wisdom. And, and this is what wisdom has to say. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works. Before his deeds of old, I was formed long ago. At the very beginning, when the world came to be, when there were no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the world or its field or any of the dust of the earth. I was there when he set the heavens in place. When he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep. When he established the clouds above and fixed secu securely the fountains of, of the deep. 
when he gave the sea its boundary so the waters would not overstep his command and when he marked out the foundations of the earth then I was constantly at his side I was filled with delight day after day rejoicing always in his presence rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind this is the words of wisdom the wisdom was with God it was God's wisdom that saw all these things take place and established the things that we read about in creation and in these stories uh, these stories about uh, all the things that God uh, made sure that they happen we have in our Old Testament the passage of scripture that we call wisdom literature wisdom literature throughout the Old Testament helps us to understand God's wisdom there is not there is not um, much doubt that in most of the wisdom literature wisdom is given the feminine gender gender because as most of us here will agree that's where wisdom originates in the feminine gender so uh, God recognized that uh, as well as we can probably not everyone would agree with that but you just have to live with it wisdom was there from the beginning before the world began wisdom was there with God and as we move from these passages the passages of Job and Proverbs we move into the psalm that we read this morning and we hear the words what are human beings that you God would even think about them what are human beings that you would even pay attention to us and we recognize that God made us in his image and the psalm goes on to say that you have made them only slightly less than divine crowning them with glory and grandeur you let them rule over your handiwork putting everything under their feet wow what a great responsibility God has given to us it's stated so clearly in all of that he is all that he has done and all of his wisdom he he made us only slightly less than himself he created us in his image he gave us a soul and a spirit that we can be responsible for the things that he has done what a great responsibility that is and the big question that we must answer is what do we do what do I do with that responsibility we recognize that God's wisdom has no bounds while our wisdom has very many bounds and limitations and only when we open ourselves up to the wisdom of God are we able to move forward in chapter 15 of the book of John Jesus prays for his disciples and for all believers Jesus prays that we might live in oneness with God we need a sustaining connection with God and with other believers Jesus prays that believers will be protected from the evils of the world he prays that we will be set apart you see continuing that idea that we are a little less than God he prays that we will be sanctified for sacred task of witnessing God's truth in the world we are sent into the world not just to speak the facts of the gospel but to tell of the divine reality revealed in Jesus Christ not not just talk about it but act on it uh, open the package as Jerome pointed out we can have the knowledge we now have to have the wisdom 
to use that knowledge according to God's way. In our world today, we are filled with conflicting, conflicting and false claims. The advertising industry today promises everyone all kinds of romance, happiness, and success if we just buy and use the right products. We can be great athletes if we wear the right shoes. Our smile will be brighter if we use the right toothpaste. And all of these products that are advertised for us day after day uh, on our televisions and, and, and in our newspapers, all of these products will change our personality. Oh, I have problems with that. I, I made the mistake long ago. There was an advertisement on TV and it talked about Buicks. And it said if you would drive a Buick, you would be a better person. Well, I made this statement in church. If you're a slob and you buy a Buick, you're still going to be a slob. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I'll tell you what happened to me in that situation. About a week later, I found out about six people in my congregation bought Buicks. And they didn't talk to me for a little while. But none of them were slobs when they bought their Buick. They didn't need that kind of a chain. But that's what advertising tells us over and over. You know, there's only one thing that can truly change a person. First of all, change has to come with, with, from within. I can't change any of you. I can only change myself. And only the power of the Holy Spirit, the love and the power of Jesus Christ can change any one of us. And that change must come from within. It must come from the wisdom of God that, that is poured out for you and for me. Uh, and, and we need to recognize that. There are many things in the world that can change us in different ways, but asking Jesus Christ to be the Lord of our life is not of this world, but he can change our lives. Jesus gives us a set of rules, and he allows us grace and forgiveness to follow his way. Jesus knows the nature of the journey that's laid out for the faithful. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are provided with wisdom and strength beyond our own. And we can go into the world confident of his presence with us. There's a passage of scripture in Romans chapter 5 that I would like to bring to our attention this morning. It says there, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. If we persevere, we will have character. Oh, I know there are some that need some improvements in character, and we all work on that. But it says here that we might have to go through some sufferings. We might look around us and say that our church has gone through some sufferings. But if we persevere, we will be made stronger. We will be better at the things that we are called to do. We will have better character. 
Our church will have better character. Each one of us can have better character. And because of that, we have hope. And hope is really the thing that we gather together in the hope that comes to us through the power of the Spirit, the love of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we hear the words of Scripture. We recognize the responsibility that we have. Be with us that we might bear up under the sufferings, that we might truly persevere, and from that perseverance gain character and hope. In Jesus' name, amen. We will continue with the singing of our last hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Will you stand with me as we sing together? as we leave this place may we take the word from God the wisdom that he gives to us into all the places we go share it with those around and recognize all the things that are bright and beautiful because that's the way God makes them in Jesus name Amen